What's up guys, Ray from Apple Valley Astrologer. So, sorry if I look a little crazy. <laughs> uh, Mercury being my key planet in my in my natal chart. And it it being in the sixth house, it transits that have to do with Mercury affect my overall constitution and health and yeah, the first sign of some really stressful aspects with Mercury is usually my eyes get all bloodshot and there, so there, there it is. I thought everybody was acting kind of weird in my house last night. Uh, usually everybody's kind of on a consistent sleep schedule and all of a sudden not only was the person that's usually up at 6, six o'clock in the morning or the crack of dawn randomly walking around the house at 3 o'clock in the morning but then my... My uh, little kid that I watch, he also was coming in and out of the, his room, and my boyfriend was even up. It was really weird. Usually, I'm the only one that's up. That's why I like also being up at night, because then I get some peace and quiet. And I've noticed their behavior, and then I went and looked in the mirror when I got up, and I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I knew that there was supposed to be some sort of trine between Uranus and Mercury. Um, that I knew was supposed to start tomorrow, but technically with the orb factor it starts today. Or the effects can be felt today. And then it didn't dawn on me that there is that T-score with Mars. I mean, I already covered that in my December forecast, but sometimes uh, when I cover something in advance, then the, you know, I, I kind of just like, oh, so I covered that. It's already taken care of. Uh, and, and theoretically. <laughs> in one of my vlog episodes. I was kind of ranting about define planets in certain signs. Just a waste of everyone's time that's trying to learn about themselves. Even though I do still think that. There are different components of a needle chart that is evident from an objective perspective as opposed to an internal confirmation. So it goes back to like the qualitative and quantitative evidence argument that I talked about in my um, Science for the Wind video. So I am going to touch base on some or components of a chart and go over all the certain signs, but I'm not going to go over all of them and I'll tell you why. So. The sun I can obviously go into depth about, but I mean, if you need to learn the basics of sun sign astrology, then most of my videos are pretty much over your head anyway, so I'm not really going to jump into the sun per se in detail. The moon, yes, there's different characteristics. Yes, I can go out and survey people that all have like a Sagittarius moon or a Cancer moon, do some sort of, you know, questionnaire thing and collect all the data and then determine what are the frequent behavior quirks that they admit to. That would be the only plausible way to accurately explain somebody's emotional complex. So since the moon is obviously an internal validation and I am only limited to having one moon and that being that I have Saturn conjunct with my moon, I don't even theoretically feel as much as my moon is supposed to feel in certain situations. So um, I'm not going to go over the moon. I may, if people request, go over just a list, but I'm not going to go into giving detailed examples of people with certain moons because I don't have that moon, therefore I don't understand how they feel. And therefore I am not in the right place to be telling people how they feel. I ran with that. So I'll cover the rising, which is important, the ascendant. Not only is it the chart ruler, it also is the key planet for self-awareness, self-evolution, and any kind of individual success, any kind of goals and, and such. More or less, if you know your your strengths and weaknesses, if you're aware of your abilities, if you hone your abilities and your talents, then it's easier for you to progress and achieve certain goals that you can set up for yourself. And then you can 
avoid that huge grandiose gap between the ideal self and the real self, too, which is the MC and the IC. So, yeah, sorry, my sinuses are kick killing me, too, because Gemini Rising, and it's that time of the year, that t squares kicking my ass right now. And just in case anybody's thinking to themselves, well, I'm not feeling anything from that T-square. Well, not all transits are created equal, and they don't always affect all the same people. You have to look at your natal chart, and the best thing to do for a visual comparison is a bi-wheel, and take a look and see things that are transiting over certain needle chart signatures for you, or specifically, for example, since I'm a Gemini Rising, my chart ruler is Mercury, so Mercury is the main contributing factor to not only my ascendant manifestation, which is my physical body, but just me and as a character overall. So any kind of Mercury transits, especially hard aspects, are going to kick my ass. So that's just that example there. You can notice that I'm actually a lot better with the transit concepts when I'm looking at an individual or psychological level, because obviously I've mentioned this before, astropsychology is morte, and I, I don't know why I feel the need to explain myself still, because I've been <laughs> not mind some comments or some constructive comments, but people who waste their fucking time correcting really simple grammar errors that I make. I don't really understand you. I was like, my videos are fucking long. Like, long. I don't even expect half of the people that start to watch my videos to watch the entire video. But I still continue to talk anyway, because as I said before, I'm going to talk regardless if you're here or not, so what the fuck ever, and yeah. So, I just don't understand somebody who wastes 10 minutes of their day to watch one of my videos just so they can try to nitpick out really minuscule, stupid, trivial stuff that I say. I'm a triple air native, so I have a Libra Sun, a Gemini Rising, and an Aquarius MC. And I have a lot of squares with like my Mars, my Mercury, so I have nervous energy. Not to mention, I have my moon like smack dab in the middle between my Uranus and my Saturn, so I am the Jekyll and Hyde personification. So I'm erratic, I'm, I have anxiety, I talk way too fast, I talk and say things before I even process what I'm saying, <laughs> and also having obviously a water mercury and an air AC, there's obviously a conflict of how I express myself because those obviously don't mesh well together. So another example for you, you can apply that to your own chart if you at least get the concept of what I'm getting at. So anyway, um, basically this is just a random rant and I guess partial transit informative video. And so yeah, if Mercury is a, a key planet for you, <laughs> um, just be aware that you might get sick or have some headaches or whatever. Well, I guess me saying headaches is kind of projecting because I'm a Libra, my polarity is Aries, and usually with medical astrology, the polarity is usually the symptoms that you start to display and Aries rules the head and they get migraines and blah 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 so yeah you may not get headaches but if you feel weird or feel sick or weak or whatever well I wouldn't say weak because since Mars is in Libra there's obviously this lethargic sloth kind of vibe going on with our energy and stamina but if you're just feeling like under the weather that's probably what's from take some extra vitamins, Epsom salt baths work well. Um, let me think what else to, since I'm trying to make this an informative thing. Um, Valerine root. And my herbs are not. Nettle leaf. Fun Greek? Or is it? Lemon balm. So, if you are an herbalist or you frequent the organic store or you make your own teas or 
You buy some of those prepackaged organic teas, anything with nettle leaf, lemon balm. Uh, Valerine root is a is a weird one that one usually doesn't come in teas. You have to get a custom tea for that, which hence is well, you go to the Astro shop at theapplevalleystarter.com and I can hook you up with that. And oh, also too, if you do go and look at that and you see, oh, I don't want the whole cup because I don't want to pay that much. I am willing to do samples. Just contact me personally, work it out with me, and we can just do a quick PayPal thing and paperwork and I send a sample off to you or whatever you want to do. I will go into the rising, setting up all my notes for an introduction video, and as you can see here, um, all I did was ask, what is an ascendant, why is it important, uh, how it contributes to natal astrology, and understanding the perks of the ascendant, and that's a, that's a six foot or half full, and I'm not even done. So I guess there's obviously going to be an introduction video to that, and then I'll go into the signs at some point, and yeah. so. Just with how I kind of feel, I don't know how many videos I'll pump out today, but as I'm sure some people have noticed, I've been kind of obsessive about this. So, I don't know. I'm not going to promise anything. I'm going to say I'm not going to. We'll see how it goes. Hope everybody else doesn't feel like they got hit by a train like I do, and good day, and 